welcome to Learn A-Level Biology for free with Ms Estrick. In this video I'll be going through gas exchange in terrestrial insects. So we'll be looking at the anatomy, adaptations and how they prevent water loss. So first of all, just a bit of an overview on the terrestrial insects. So they all have this exoskeleton which is made up of chitin which is a hard fibrous material to help protect them but also it contains a lipid layer to prevent water loss. They don't have lungs for their ventilation and gas exchange system. Instead, they have a tracheal system, and that's what we'll be going through. So limiting water loss, this is one of the big things for any organism that lives on land, which is what we mean by terrestrial. They have to balance being able to exchange gases with reducing the amount of water loss. And in particular, AQA focuses on insects and plants. So what we'll be looking at is what are the adaptations insects have to reduce water loss? So there's three key things. First of all, their gas exchange system has um, quite a small surface area to volume ratio where water can evaporate from. So having that small surface, which is linked to this idea of spiracles, there's only a very, very small hole where water can evaporate from. We also mentioned they have that lipid layer on their exoskeleton and that makes them waterproof. So water can't evaporate across all of their body. It is just through the spiracles and the spiracles, which we're going to look at in a bit more detail. This is tiny holes on their abdomen where gases can enter and exit, but also water can evaporate from. But number one, we've said they're very small but also they can open and close. So they won't remain open permanently, so they can be closed, and this is to prevent water loss. So we have a look then at the tracheal system. So it involves trachea, tracheoles, and spiracles. It's the three structures within this tracheal system. So first of all, the spiracles are round. They're valve-like openings, meaning they can open and shut, and they run along the length of the abdomen. So here on this insect, all of these tiny holes, we've got one here, 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 and here, and in fact, another one just there. Those are the spiracles. So they're just tiny, tiny circles right on the outside, which we can see down here as well, which then lead into the tracheal tube system. So those spiracles, they can open and close to control water loss, and oxygen will be diffusing in, carbon dioxide diffusing out and the spiracles attach to the trachea. So trachea are a network of internal tubes within the insect. To keep those tubes open, a bit like the trachea in animals, they have rings within the trachea to strengthen them, to keep them open and to stop it from collapsing. So gases can constantly move in and out. The final structure is the tracheals. So the trachea branch into even smaller tubules and that's what the tracheals are. And the tracheals will then reach to every single tissue within the insect to deliver oxygen at the respiring cells. So that's how all the cells within the insect will receive oxygen and it'll pick up the carbon dioxide from respiration to then diffuse out. So those are the key structures. The final parts are just looking at how then gases can move in and around the tracheal system. So the first method out of the three is just simple diffusion. So when the cells respire within the insect's body, they're using up oxygen and they're producing carbon dioxide. And that creates a concentration gradient between the concentrations of those two gases inside of the insect compared to the outside atmosphere. And because of that concentration gradient, and because the insects are so small, and this distance between the tracheals and the outside is minuscule, that then means that simple diffusion can occur. Number two is um, gas exchange in mass transport. So this is where the muscles within the insect's abdomen can contract and relax. And in doing this, it's a way to pump and move gases on mass in and out of the insect's tracheal system. So that's just going to speed up and increase the volume of gases. 
The final method is um, quite different, and this is to do with pressure changes. So when the insects are flying, the muscle cells will be respiring aerobically to begin with, but very quickly it will turn to anaerobic respiration as they run out of oxygen. And that will then produce lactate or lactic acid. Because those cells are producing lots of lactate, that lowers the water potential of the cells, and that causes water to move from the tracheals, those tiny, tiny tubules, into the cells by osmosis. Now, because liquid that naturally occurs in the tracheals is moving out into the cells, it then provides a lower pressure in the tracheals compared to the atmosphere. And if you've got a lower pressure, sorry, a, a lower volume, you will also have a lower pressure compared to the atmosphere. And that is then what then forces in more air from the atmosphere. This drop in volume of gas and drop in pressure causing the air from the atmosphere to draw into the tracheal system. So just in summary, for any gas exchange um, system that you learn, you're always looking for what provides the large surface area. And in this case, it's a large number of these fine tracheals, as well as there's lots of spiracles running along the abdomen. Um, short diffusion distance or pathway, and in this case, the walls of the tracheals are very thin, but also the distance between the abdomen and the outside of the insect, so the difference um, between the distance in the spiracles and the tracheals, is very, very short, so the gases don't have far to diffuse. And finally is how is that concentration gradient maintained, and in this case, it's because those respiring cells will be using up oxygen, and producing carbon dioxide, that is maintaining this steep diffusion gradient. So that is it for gas exchange in insects. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and click subscribe to keep up to date.